You are listening to Anna Letitia Cook at Women Up Radio. Good morning and welcome to our new specialist series, which is about women framing their future. Ruth Sachs, who is Principal Consultant of Boardroom Focus, and I are going to be discussing various topics during the whole of this series. But today we're going to start with the issues around going back to work, changing or not expectations, and trying to maintain the balance, setting boundaries, keeping to them, and all of the new issues around work being hybrid and everyone having to basically cope with what's been happening and the new ways things are going over the last year and a half it must be a year and a half now that we've been doing well, this near, near as two years is it two years already oh my god yeah. time flies <laughs> not in a good way necessarily anyway no, not anyway <laughs> moving swiftly on exactly <laughs> so what do you think with this aspect of going back to work or not going back to work, what can we really expect from it? And do you think this yo-yoing is going to continue for a long time? And what can we do to manage it really f- for the best? Because it's quite a difficult issue. I think it is a really difficult issue. I think that we've had a period of we, we were all working in offices and going to meetings and networking and doing all those lovely, nice things where you just went off and talked to people. And then suddenly, and very quickly, we all had to go and work from, from our back bedrooms or from the dining room table and manage everything around that, whether you have children or you have caring responsibilities. And now there's this attempt to bring us back slowly but surely into the office and sadly we've also got new variants coming out which mean that well we're not sure if you should come to work or everybody needs to go back and work from home and it's making life really difficult and I think it's a it's useful to think to consider what works well for each of us so when you work working from home all the time for me there's something about what did I do to make it manageable did I have set working times did I give myself an hour off in the day and go out for fresh air that I wouldn't have done any other time and I'm not doing now because I don't know where I'm going and there's something about saying okay these are my rules for working so that you create boundaries for yourself and a way of working that works for you yeah and whilst we've got this yo-yo thing I think it's important to feel comfortable in how you manage your working life I think now more than ever we need to be more resilient because we're not in a social atmosphere anymore and even those people who worked from home because that was their working life before before covid and yeah. and, and like everybody <laughs> moving from home. yes me too sometimes but it's made me recognize that actually i need to i need better working habits yes so i do need to go out every day even even if it's only for 10 minutes i need some fresh air yeah I've, I've, that for me i actually helps my my work-life balance, it helps me feel better, all of those things. And I think whilst we've got all this uncertainty, and it looks as though this uncertainty is going on for a while, I th- we need to be clear about what works for us. Yes. So if for you, it's taking the dog for a walk at exactly. 9 o'clock in the morning, yeah. 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock in the afternoon or whatever, that's what you do. And those are your out of office times. Yep. And it's not terrible. The world won't fall apart. If you have to do your pick up the children from school or go to the pharmacy or whatever it is, I think, I think we have to be very clear and very strong that those are how it's going to work from now on. Yep. And when you go back to work, you still take those timeouts. Yes, as yep. far yep. as you possibly can. And you obviously you're going to have to work much more in collaboration with other people. But it seems that we, we've all got 
we're all looking at work in different ways, but we're all looking at work with new eyes. And there's much more of a recognition of, I need a better work-life balance. And I think that's general across the board. I don't just think that's for women. I think it's for everyone who has spent more time away from work, has recognised either that whilst they've been working from home, they've worked from dawn till dusk and beyond. Because I know people who've been stuck in front of the computer for 10 hours a day. Or they've recognised that they can get more done in a short period of time. Yeah. I mean, I had an advantage, I think, with working from home because of the fact when I first got pregnant, um, I was working in a company in the city uh, and my husband was in the north of the UK because he was in a different office. Um, so I moved up north, obviously, to live with him and, you know, to have children, etc. cetera. Um, and because of that, I actually took the decision to leave my job which I was lucky I had the luxury to do that. But then I created my own business. But my reasons for doing that were I wanted to be able to drop the children off at school. I mean, okay, they were babies. So drop the children off at nursery, pick them up and to work my my work around those hours, which I think me, I did it by choice, but this is what is being forced on people at the moment with working from home even as employees. And I think a lot of them, particularly a lot of my French clients, they're finding it quite difficult to manage because they've never worked from home or they've got some managers who, because they're not used to managing, they're really micromanaging and they're not looking at the hour they used to do on public transport morning and evening as being the employee's own private time they're looking at it as being a longer working day, which is completely wrong. And I think this is something that needs to be looked at and reviewed so that people can negotiate that better and managers can understand that better. And I think managers, in fact, need help in how to manage better in this situation. And then also with the hybrid situation, how many days they're at home, how many days they're in the office. But from my point of view, one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give is what you've already said, establish your working routine. Because me dropping the kids off, because it was my company, nobody could tell me what to do. So (laughs) I worked far more intensively in the time that I worked because I knew that I had these non-negotiable times of dropping off, picking up, blah, blah, blah. And it made it easier for me because I knew, okay, I'm going to start work here. I'm going to finish work here. As you talked about taking the dog for a walk, I've always had dogs. So I've always taken dogs for a walk during the day. Um, And I had my two slots or my three slots of dog walking, which it doesn't matter whether you have a dog or not. If you put your two or three slots, the break is such a helpful mental break that it rejuvenates you and it makes such a difference and it makes the intensity of the rest of the time not just manageable but actually more creative and more productive so I find that very 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 helpful the thing that I think could be more complicated is the hybrid version going back to the office Um, and how to transfer the routine and whether the hybrid is set days each week or flexible days each week. Yeah, there's two things that I'd like to pull up on there, if that's okay. The (laughs) the first one is is the break. The break, most of us work on a laptop or or some technology or a screen. And actually going away and having that time away from the screen not only helps your, 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 the contact with the screen and all that that does or doesn't do for you, but it also helps your thinking time. And when we're in an office, we don't give ourselves thinking time. We, yeah. we go from meeting to meeting to meeting. Yeah. 
And we don't have that reflection, but being able to create that reflective time is really, really useful. Yes. And it's really helpful. That's the first thing. The second thing that I think has raised an awful lot of issues that you, you've mentioned is the role of managers and how you manage yeah. and lead people remotely. And then when they're in the office and maybe you're not, because if your staff or your team are working in a hybrid manner, what does the manager do or what does the team leader yep. do? Do they work all the time so they can see everybody or do they also have a hybrid life, which is perfectly reasonable, but you've also identified that micromanagement is a real concern. Yes. It's really, and it's stressful for everybody. It's stressful yep. for managers and the leaders who are trying to keep tabs on everybody. Yep. And it's stressful for the people who are working for them. Yeah. So how do you think we can maintain balance with that? I mean, individually and management and setting boundaries, because it's great for me to say, well, I did this because I was the boss. But, you know, when you're the boss, you don't actually see the reality. You just do your own thing. So I understand fully that. I was in a very lucky position, but if I was back in an office or, you know, if I was um, a member of a team now, I think it would be a lot more complicated. And I think my theory about it is great and it definitely works really well, but it's actually putting it in place when you're in a team and setting the boundaries for yourself, but also so you don't have the intrusion of others. And that's not as easy to do. No, I agree with you. I think that as a team leader or a manager, you need to, you need to have those conversations with the people who work with you and for you. Yeah. And depending on the size of the team, you do that in whatever format works for you. So if if you can't bring everybody into the office, then you have hybrid meetings with people in the office and and people working from home but everybody can see each other on a screen. And I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. So you have that visibility, you create trust and you all share, share the experiences and the requirements and the needs and the balance that everybody has to go through. And you work out some way of working that is fit for purpose. It won't yeah. be perfect but it has to suit most of the people most of the time. It may be that you need a facilitator to do that so that everybody gets a chance to express their views and talk about their challenges and what works for them. It may also be that for some people, they have to bring into a public arena things they haven't wanted to talk about. So, yep. for example, for people who previously had caring responsibilities that they dealt with in the morning and the evening and not during the day because of health issues and shielding they now deal with those throughout the day yeah. and that going into a working office is not really an issue for them at the moment they can't they can't do that because it, it potentially creates a layer of concern that they don't really want to have at the moment. Yeah. Yep. So it's about being open and creating an environment where people can share these things and say, look, I'm looking after my elderly father. Um, I'm very, I can work from home. We've got a reasonably good, re you know, we, I've got a good relationship with him. I do have some help, but I'd rather not come into the office unless I absolutely have to. Yep. Um, whereas some people might desperately want to be in the office three or four days a week because they want to get out of their home environment yes. or they don't have the right sort of environment that's conducive to working. Yes. So by having those conversations, hopefully everybody in the same room at the same time, you can begin to work out what's going to be the best way of working, of leading, of managing, of communicating, of having keep, having keep in touch meetings, all of those things that actually 
develop and hopefully increase trust between team members and the manager or the team leader and also create more effective ways of working that aren't that, that have a better balance to them yes yeah i think that sounds great well you if you don't try it yep not going to know and and it might not be exactly like that as you said that was your way of working this yep. is an option but you have to work out what works for you, for the work that you're doing, for the time frame that you're yep. working in, with the people that you've got who are part of your team. And what I do know from, from the people I'm working with at the moment, recruitment's really, really difficult. You want to keep people. You don't want yep. to scare them away. Yes. So as a, as a leader or as a manager, and even as a colleague, you want to keep people in the, you know, you want to keep everybody that you've been working with. It's yeah. so much easier when you've already got some sort of relationship with these people. Yeah, exactly. I think one of the other things is being able to say no oh, um, yeah. and not being scared because it's not just um, saying no to your manager or your, your colleagues. It's also saying no to your family and friends. Because mm. I had, there was a lovely lady who used to work for me. I mean, me, I can be quite direct. So if my family or friends phoned when I was in my, you know, working hours, I'd just be like, sorry, I'm busy. I'm at work. I'll call you later. And it didn't worry me. But I had um, a lovely lady who her mother used to phone her every morning at, I don't know, nine o'clock or half past nine or something. And someone else used to phone her every afternoon and her friends used to phone her during the day. And because she was working at home, she couldn't get her head round. This is my working environment. I am in my working hours. If they'd phoned her when she was in the office, she would have had no hesitation saying, I can't talk. I'm at work. But mm. she found it very difficult when she was working from home and she also found it difficult to get her family and friends to understand the fact that she was at home didn't mean she was free um, and to really, you know, get the vision that she was still at work. So how do you think people can better facilitate that? Because it's something that I've heard again and again and again and again over the last year or so um, that they've my clients have found it really difficult to tell their family no as much as their managers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're I mean, a strong they, character they, like me, so we yeah, both just I go. Think, well, I think, that, I think there's two things, Anna. I think one is talking to family uh, and the other is talking to your work colleagues and your manager. Yep. In terms of creating, I think you have to create a workspace yep. as far as you possibly can, even if you have to take it down every night because you need to use the table for meals. But you have a space that is, is work. It's got whatever you need, your yep. mobile, your laptop, a glass of water, the coffee, whatever it is. It's your working space. And this is where you sit down and work. It's your desk. Yeah. Um, I think that's important. As far as family goes, you just have to keep saying, I'm at work. Or you put your phone on. You only take the calls you need to yes. take. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Yeah. I mean, I have my phone. You know, if I'm working and I'm focusing on something, I just put my phone on silent. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. And it's got a message that says, I'm, you know, I'll call you back. Leave me yes. a message and I'll call you back. Yeah. We used to do this. There used to be a time where everybody had answering phone messages. Yes. Or and no, and everybody, I think what's happened is there's now an expectation because you have a mobile phone, which means that it's with you all the time. Yeah. You should answer it all the time. Yeah. Having said that, there are lots of people who don't answer my messages, she says, thinking <laughs> in particular. In the but it's but there's something about I'm working, I can't yeah. do this, and also yeah. separating things off. And if it's really, really that difficult and you need to have a number for work, then I would get yourself another. Yeah. I would literally 
buy another phone or yep. get a phone from work because it's really important. Yes. And eventually your family and your friends will understand that you can't talk to them. If it's that urgent, then you, I don't know, you can set yourself up a WhatsApp on your laptop and, and you can see if somebody sent you a message and it's urgent. Yes. But yep. other than that, yep. just, you have to make your own rules yep exactly but and in, in the same way if you've agreed with your line manager and your team men, uh, members that these are my working hours or the yes I can answer the phone then that's what you do yes yep and if you're if you're with your family from 6 30 in the evening onwards then you don't answer the work phone exactly yeah, two phones is great because I used to have that for years and years. And I just with, I used to keep the, the personal phone so that I could see if there was an emergency. Um, so if someone called me three times, you know, one after the other, after the other, I'd be like, okay, this is an emergency. And then I would answer and say, what is it? If it wasn't an emergency, I'd say, okay, bye. And that was it. Um, yeah. And with work, I would only have the work phone turned on during working hours. And it was great. It was so simple. And lots of people I know do have two yeah. phones or have an old mobile phone yes. that, you can, it's, that you can use for that purpose. Yes. Sometimes I think we're too soft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I also think it's – I have – for a long, long time, after some very challenging work experience where I had a line manager that would come up with a new project at four o'clock on a Friday afternoon that was a always urgent. On. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, and that I did. am, I'm British. Five o'clock, I've gone. <laughs> well, I think, you know, nobody needs anything uh, last thing on Friday or first thing on Monday. Exactly. That, that's my view. <laughs> Um, and you learn that and you learn to say no. And once you start saying no and the world doesn't collapse around you, you yeah. can do it again. Yes. And that's the thing. You have to practice. Yes. You have to practice saying no. Maybe you practice with your mother or your friends first because that's slightly less stressful. Yes. And you move on to colleagues and line managers. Yeah. I'm not free. I'm yeah. unavailable. Yes. Can't be that, you know, if it really is that urgent, fine, but it usually isn't. Yep. Yep, exactly. exactly. Very good. Any mm. Anything else um, you want to say on this topic or any other advice or any other visions on that? I, I, one of the things I think is I think you need, what you need to do is you need to take your lunchtime walk or your morning stroll to think things through and to decide what it is, the way you want to work, or what you would like to happen. And when you get back, you might write it down. And then if anybody asks, you've already got it printed, you don't have to think about it again. It's yeah. there. Yeah. And you can see it. Those are your, this is how I, in order for me to have work-life balance, to be able to work effectively, this is the way I'm going to be working. Brilliant. That's fine. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. That's great. Uh, that's been a really interesting discussion on this. I hope it's helped everyone because I think we've both given some interesting tips about how we've managed things, which are things that we can share with other people and other people can use those to make it easier for them. Um, and hopefully hybrid will continue to happen because, OK, it's in bad circumstances. But I actually think companies now seeing that it is possible and it does work well can be a great advantage for everybody. Absolutely. Okay, well, lovely speaking to you and speak to you again next month. That Take care. Okay. See you. Bye.